Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's Middle East update. It's the week of July 17th. Before we jump in, grab the PDF PowerPoint. You can get it at our website at holygroundexplorations.com or it should be a link on this YouTube page. Well, what a week. You know, Biden's in Israel, Saudi Arabia, if there was a tagline, unfortunately, I think I'd come up with to describe this uh, trip, I'd probably say um, the Shakespearean play, Much To Do About Nothing. It started big. Biden uh, getting off the plane makes the statement, I'll say again, you need not to be a Jew to be a Zionist that Biden declares that the connection between the Israeli people and the American people is bone deep, he said. But he refused to go to the Western Wall. Makes no sense. He'll go to a Palestinian hospital, take down the Israeli flag, but Zionist, American people, bone deep, you won't go to the Western Wall, you remove the Israeli flag, you question Jerusalem as being the undivided capital of Israel. Well, he meets Netanyahu, and of course, back to Biden, he, Netanyahu sits down and they speak about um, a credible military option versus Iran. Words won't do it. There has to be something credible. And uh, Lapid actually says the same thing. And then um, the opposition leader, again, Netanyahu, tells uh, Biden after a warm 15-minute reception or whatever, in which Biden says, I've always loved you, BB. Uh, bromance there. Um, but the bottom line is nothing really of substance came out of this at all. Biden had told the Israeli TV that if using force on Iran is the last resort, I will use it. I'm sure Iran's shaking in their boots on that. And finally, David Friedman, the former ambassador to Israel, uh, his comments, I, I respect him a great deal. If you have a chance to get his book, Sledgehammer, get it, read it. Uh, this is firsthand information. But David Freeman writes, I wish I had something better to say, but Biden denying Israeli sovereignty over parts of Jerusalem is a bitter pill that I will not and I cannot swallow. Uh, the Palestinian Authority doesn't come out of this uh, with much. In fact, truth be told, as um, Biden's on Air Force One heading back, what do they do? They launch four rockets, okay? Tells you what they think about the trip. Uh, Biden did say to them that he's a pro-two-state solution, but doesn't feel like the, quote, ground is ripe for that at this time. So that's sort of it in a nutshell. There's some other things you can read um, in more detail if you get that PDF PowerPoint. Again, that concept that Biden tells Abbas, uh, I'm all for it, uh, pre-1967 borders, et cetera, et cetera. But with all that being said, the time's not ripe. So empty words, no progress, no solution. And then of course, um, Bibi and Biden, we talked about that, that, that uh, Biden tells Bibi how much he loves him. Uh, there's a good chance Bibi's continuing to hold his own or if nothing else, e I mean, even rising in the polls. So no big shock if Bibi uh, is the next prime minister of Israel. Uh, so all of this that's going on, and as I mentioned, in the midst of it all, uh, Biden trying to play both sides uh, and back on Air Force One and we get four rockets launched by Hamas. We get Israel retaliating. Sounds like the same Middle East to me. Um, but one other article that I think is probably worth noting 
Uh, I one other thing before with this Biden visit, you know, he made a big deal about um, the Saudis opening up airspace, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Friedman came out and said, that's no big deal. I, we've been doing that uh, through the Abrahamic Accords back and forth going over Saudi airspace. And the Saudis very quickly pump the brakes and basically says not so fast with uh, Biden probably hoping to come out of this able to sort of wave the Abrahamic Accord flag saying, look what I've done. I've brought um, the Saudis closer to Israel, but mm, Saudis are pumping the brakes saying there's no big deal about the airspace and we're not committing to do anything regarding Israel until the two-state solution comes into reality. So again, no matter what you're hearing from Biden, much to do about nothing. Well, last thing I want to cover is uh, Russia and Iran. Uh, it, President Biden's national security advisor said on Monday that Russia was seeking hundreds of surveillance drones from Iran, including those that are capable of firing missiles. They want to use them in the war against Ukraine. And so hours before the conference began, this conference with Biden and uh, in Saudi Arabia, hours before that conference began, the White House released uh, satellite imagery that indicates Russian officials have twice recently visited Iran to see weapons grade capable drones and it's looking like they will acquire those from Iran in their war against Ukraine. You know, a, a betting man, as you're looking at all of this and uh, you're looking at the strategic, remember that game Stratego where you have the red and the blue and th that sort of stuff. If you're looking at who's voting for who to win, it seems like Russia is thinking that Iran is going to have the upper hand and uh, cozying up in a sense with them, with this whole thing that's taken place in Syria. And uh, Russia saying to Israel, no more airstrikes. We don't care what you're saying in regards to taking out weaponry that's heading to Hezbollah. No, it seems to me that Russia is in a sense all in on Iran should not surprise us, um, or maybe it should. I don't know. Uh, all I know is the, I, I can see the handwriting on the proverbial wall here. And so I, I think Russia will be distancing themselves uh, from Israel. And I think it's going to lead up to that confrontation that we read about in the book of Ezekiel. Yep, that's right. End time stuff. And I think that's the age and the time in which we're living. So that's our report for this week. Again, just a reminder, we are going back to Israel. We're, we have a trip in September that will be the 14th through the 23rd. Um, I, we're constantly being asked, so what's your schedule look like for the next year and, and maybe even the year after that? Because that's how far in advance a lot of tour groups uh, plan their trips. And even though we do have some dates uh, to reserve hotels and buses and stuff like that, our focus is always going to be on the one right in front of us. And the reason for that is it's not just COVID, but everything that's going on in the world at any time, the doors could close. And so we look at it as every trip that we take could be our very last one. So if you've felt that tug, if you felt like I need to experience Israel, I need to walk that land. I've said it so many different times in so many different ways, but if you love your Bible, this is a must for you. Because those black and white words explode into living colors. There's nothing quite like it. Well, anyhow, point being, we're going and we still have room. And all the information's on our website, holygroundexplorations.com. Or if you've got any questions whatsoever, you can 
email my wife at Sharon at hgexplorations.com. So with that, God bless you. Shalom. And we'll talk to you next week.